Thanks for coming to the uh, select boarding meeting. This is Monday, the 21st of September, 2020. Can't believe it's already that far into September. <clears throat> so tonight on our agenda, we have um, some minutes. We're, we're just a uh, touch on our standing topic of COVID-19 state of emergency. Um, just a brief discussion about benchmarks for employee wage adjustments, because I noticed there were some uh, new figures released about where the state thinks they are. Any uh, select board and town administrator updates. We've got a local preference request for DHCD for 120 North Main Street. We got to sign a vote on. Um, we're going to take a vote on the police union contract vote. Uh, quick discussion about chapter 90 funds and projects, some liquor license fees, and then a discussion about um, somebody's asked for a reduction in a gas fee permit request. So that's what we've got on our lineup for tonight. Um, so let's do our minutes first. We have a motion on the September 14th minutes. Motion. All right. And uh, actually, I should say, too, that we're down one member tonight, so it's just Tom and I. Um, all those in favor? Or I'll second, actually. And then all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Two to zip on the minutes. Um, I don't know, actually, if we have anything for a state of emergency update. I don't, Laurie's not on tonight, so I don't know. From um, a safety perspective, there may not be nothing specific. Do you have anything, Jeff? Or Yeah, um, there was one <clears throat> new um, close contact reported in Sunderland, not a, a positive case, but somebody was in close contact with a, a okay. positive result. Um, and we are working on wrapping up the first quarter reporting requirements for the CARES Act Coronavirus Relief Fund. Uh, and then we'll be moving on to our FEMA uh, reimbursements. Uh, and then following up on an item from last week about the reopening of the town office building, working on the the plan should there be a potential exposure in the town office building with the uh, action steps would be in, in working with the Board of Health to come up with that plan. Okay. All right. That's good. I think that'll be nice for people at least to be able to make an appointment if they need to, to come in, which would be good. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and then next we've got um, our discussion about benchmarks for employee wages. And I know, um, and I, I saw a, uh, we got an email the other day, I think it was, about um, they're looking at potentially being down $5 billion in state revenues, right? Well, that seems to be yeah. the case. Yeah, and then there was an <clears throat> article that I just saw the headline of uh, right at the end of the day from State House News, and I guess there's a, a different model <laughs> from oh, Tufts. Of course. Uh, saying that they project it to be only down 1.6 billion. From 5 billion to 1.6? That is the range. It's a little difference. Okay. So somewhere in there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And our tax bills are due, I believe, October 1st. So then we'll start, once those start rolling and we'll kind of get an idea of where we are in our local receipt. So that'll that'll give us, I think October will be a better month to figure out where we stand. And I think they also were talking about finalizing the budget too at the state level, right? They were talking about that, yep. Okay. So it's been an interesting year so far. So we'll see how we pan out there. Because hopefully it'll be not as bad as, as we ho hoped, if we're lucky. <clears throat> All right. Um, we'll get to our update part of the evening. Do you have any uh, exciting updates, Tom? On updates for what? For select board updates? Um, a couple things. Um, one is that we had a South County EMS uh, meeting last week. Um, the call volume last spring had, um, there was a precipitous drop in calls because of COVID. Hmm. Uh, we are back up to approximately 100 calls a month, which is kind of our normal our normal uh, call volume. So that seems to have returned um, to, to the 
more normal. We were concerned about uh, the number of runs because the number of runs is, is a revenue for us and it uh, tremendously affects our budget. So it looks like the numbers are have come back um, to, to pre-COVID or pretty near COVID. Um, South County E South County Senior Center. Um, we the the town of Hatfield donated a seven passenger van that was used on their senior center to to our senior center to use. Um, the senior director senior center director is now putting together a written plan for that use. And again, with COVID right now, it's not like we're gonna get a lot of use out of it. So we do have an opportunity to set the, the, to set the, um, the policies for use. So their work, we're working on that. She's working on that right now. We're, we're, we've asked, the, the Board of Oversight has asked the director to, to work with the Deerfield um, Board of Health to come up with a plan to, to say how many people could use the senior center um, if we get in the position. Um, so we wanna say ahead of that. One, one thing um, for seniors is um, the foot care. Uh, some of the local, some of the local um, senior centers um, are, are kind of opening up for uh, foot care. We, we may be able to do that, but it all depends on, on how many people the Board of Health says could be in the building at, at any given time. And we have to develop a protocol for cleaning. So it, it's not as simple as saying, oh yeah, we're gonna do, do health care or foot care and it happens, but we're, we're working on that. Um, That's good. So we're working on that. And also I was notified that there is available, if someone needs a chair lift for inside a house, there may, may be one available at no charge that, so if anybody in town or know someone that needs a chair lift, there may be, may be one available. Just uh, you give uh, the Sleckman's office a call and they can forward to email or email Sleckman's office. They give it forward to me and I can pass that information along. Okay. That's Thanks. about it, Davey. All right. Um, how about you, Jeff? What do we have from the town administrator side tonight? We, uh, a couple of things just wanted to mention. Um, uh, there's again the I think we talked about it last week, but uh, the flu free flu clinic um, in the Deerfield Highway garage on October 4th. And if there are volunteers um, in the community, they're with medical experience or otherwise, if they could uh, please let us know if they want to participate. Um, that's great. Otherwise, uh, just a reminder to get flu vaccines. Right. Um, uh, went to or participated in a meeting with the, oh, I'm probably gonna get this wrong, uh, FCECS about uh, communications and radios yep. um, and the, the planned radio upgrade to the 800 band. Um, and there's gonna be something coming before you shortly and, and uh, updated agreement with the regional group about radios and continuing the current system um, while the upgrade uh, to the statewide radio communication system uh, takes place. Um, and then just a couple updates from a department head meeting last week. Um, the library is gonna start, is gonna test out doing a outdoor in-person book browsing. They, they got a tent set up behind there and they're gonna put some books out and, and try to do that and see how it goes on the first day and maybe make it a regular thing. Um, okay. The assessors uh, had a meeting 
and voted um, not to raise property values this year. Yep. Um, and then the other sort of big topic that, that we talked about a little bit was uh, Halloween. And um, there's been talk in other communities and around the country about discouraging trick-or-treating or holding other events. And um, a, a lot of the department heads, um, police, library were very um, supportive of it, if the town wanted to do sort of a town sponsored in a, in a parking lot, um, socially distanced trick-or-treating in, in sort of a more controlled environment where, where volunteers are screened and give out candy and uh, things like that. Um, so wanted to mention that and, and um, explore further the idea. We have, we have you know, over five weeks to figure it out, but um, it is a discussion and I thought it was an interesting thought um, about how, how different communities are, are handling Halloween, so. Okay, yeah, that was a good point. Before you know it, it'll be here the way it's going. <clears throat> okay, all right, thank you. Um, so next up, oh, you have a local preference request to DHCD for 120 North Main Street, right? Yep, and that was discussed last week and, and yep. voted on to approve the, the letter, so. Um, just under correspondence to be signed. Okay. All right. Great. <clears throat> and then under new business, we've got our police union contract vote. So I understand we've uh, wrapped that up. Yes. That's good. Um, and I, I, I'm new to this. Am I allowed to yeah. talk about it at this point? Am I allowed to say anything or not? Um, uh and touch on the highlights, I think, but. Sure. So uh, it's a, a one year contract. Um, and that's because the, the financial uncertainty, we, we don't know where we are this year. We don't, um, and and in, in all fairness, bargaining in, in good faith with, uh, with the union, we just don't know what, what our fiscal position was going to be. And they, they understood right. that and agreed. Um, there were uh, some of the points were about um, the provision of, of vests um, when people are hired and put on duty, um, the tuition reimbursement, uh, the private duty detail rate. Um, I think we're, we're the three main topics and I may have been forgetting one. And then of course, uh, due to the name change of the select board, going through the contract right. and fixing all that. And a That's couple right. Oh, that and there, oh, the other one was uh, um, talking about the shifts and scheduling. Okay. Um, and uh, I'd like to thank Scott for his work on that. He's absent tonight. So it's greatly appreciated. And you sat in on that. And uh, I'd like to thank the police union too for their work and effort and understanding of kind of what a wacky year it's been financially, so. Um, so do you need a, need a motion on that to sign that, right? Motion. All right. I'll second. All those in favor? I do. Aye. All right. Thanks. <clears throat> and next up, I see we've got a discussion of Chapter 90 funds and projects. Um, yeah. Sorry. I was <laughs> oh, that's all right. I caught up. I was supposed to text George. Um, can we come back to that in a few yes, minutes? Yes, yeah, definitely. Easy available. Um, yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Um, let's go down to, let's do the gas permit fee one next and then we'll do the liquor license fees. <clears throat> so what, uh, what do we have on that one? So a um, uh, gentleman came by um, and with an application for um, a, uh, gas work um, and hadn't uh, realized that the fees had changed and it had billed the customer based on the old fees. So um, came in requesting a, a reduction in fees um, and 
I checked with the the uh, gas inspector, and he's you know he said he encouraged him to <laughs> to be more vigilant about yeah. checking the website, but um, yeah. it's not uh, you know it's a it's the board's prerogative, and so I just wanted to to bring that to the attention of the board. I think the the rates were increased in March, and then the application was maybe started in May or something. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Um, do you have any thoughts on that, Tom, at all? Or No, not really, David. That's fine. Okay. okay. Um, I mean, I, I'm a little I, a little concerned about the, the precedent on it, but I mean, if the, I mean, I can be convinced to waive at this time, but I think, um, I mean, it, it was a two month gap there. So I think people really need to pay attention to, um, at your incumbent to really check and make sure before you, Go and quote that you look at what the latest uh, fees are and everything. We've got all that online, right, Jeff? Yes. Yep. It's all linked to from the the gas inspectors page. Okay. Um, I mean, I guess we can if the gas inspector is fine with it, that's fine. But I think uh, next time we won't be so lenient. You know, you better pay attention to the uh, the fees. So, uh, do you need a motion on that or? I believe Probably. so. Please. Okay. All right. Do you have a motion to waive that, Tom? Well, I oh, just not waive it. I'm sorry. Go yeah, ahead. the original amount he already cut a check just go, for. Right. The prior the prior amount. So do we have a motion to um, adjust the fee to the prior amount? Motion. I'll second. All those in favor? Second. Aye. All right. Thank you. Thanks. And then we've got a discussion of liquor license fees. Right. Yeah, so um, one of the things that uh, people have been discussing uh, around the Commonwealth is the potential to, or I guess <clears throat> there have been requests for uh, prorating liquor license fees, um, especially for bars that haven't been open um, right. since March. And so, uh, you know, we, we a number of the liquor licensees in town either have other uh, licenses to to sell food or um, yeah. convenience stores or or part of restaurants, and so haven't been impacted to the same degree. But um, again, I just want to, you know liquor licenses are, are coming due pretty soon. So I thought it would be a timely discussion. I'm actually only aware of one community that has agreed to reduce liquor licenses um, and they were gonna prorate it, I think by 25%. And I've you know, done the calculations, I think in all, all alcohol licenses are, are 1400 a year and mm -hmm. um, Wine and malt are 700, and I have the breakdowns uh, by month, it, you know, depending on it, whether you wanted to do it by a percentage or say, hey, they, you know, they were closed for two months, so we'll take two months off. But um, yeah, and we've got how many establishments that only are strict? I think we just have one, right? That's only a bar. I, I believe that that is correct. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it seems a you know a fair thing, especially if you're at least for those institutions. Maybe we could look at <clears throat> doing that, and then some kind of adjusted pro rate for the other ones or something. Something to talk about. You know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that there's there's also even the the restaurant. You know, there was a complete shutdown for for a period of time, and so right. Um, Might be fair to 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 look at that. Um, do you have any thoughts on the, the proration of that, Tom? I, I, I believe, Davey, that we should hold personally. I don't know what we have, what, what uh, the ABCC collects from us for the fees. Um, but I would, I would right now say, in my opinion, I would say that we, I would pass on fees until I think bars are gonna be the last thing that are opened up. I, I don't right. know when. Yeah, um, exactly. So, so I, I, I would just, 
I would just waive the I would waive those fees until until we have a uh, a good idea when the the bars are open up. Um, so right now I would say cut it in half. I, you know, just as a guess, cut it in half. See what happens. Yeah. Especially for bars that haven't even been able to open at all. You know, at least you know there's a. So well, you're, not, you're just talking about bars. The other people, the others can make. The others are making, making. You know, they're they're open. Right. You know, they're, but if you're if you're if you're a package store, you're still selling. You know. Right. There's more there's more cost to th the business, but you're you're still selling. If you're a restaurant, you're still you know you're still. You're still selling liquor, so. But a pa I mean, if you're a bar right now, bar bar isn't open. And according to the governor, they're not they're not opening up until there's Quite a vaccine. A there's a vaccine, right. and people have it. So th th those people are in tough shape right yep. now. I would agree. <clears throat> now, do um, go ahead, Jeff. I was just going to clarify, Tom. You're saying cut in half the town's portion of the fee. So yes. whatever the fee, subtract the, what the state makes and then cut that in half. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's reasonable enough, I think. <clears throat> Do you want a motion on that, uh, Jeff? Or okay. uh, un Unless you want to keep thinking about, I mean, this is sort of a novel topic and- um, I, I, would, I would, what I, what I would recommend, David, is that we reach out, we reach out to, um, I think we only have one in town right. that's a sir. I would, I would, I'd reach out to him and, and ask him how, how we can make that work. All right. Okay. Let me try that Jeff and then we'll, then we can pop it back on the agenda if we need to. At least we start talking about it. And I see George is out there now for our, how you doing? Hey, how are you? <laughs> All right. So we get this is our actually our last regular topic, uh, other than public comment. Um, Going to talk about Chapter ninety funds and projects. <clears throat> and I think we're going to talk about equipment too, right? For that. Yeah. Okay. So how's it going? Good. So I got I think four bids in, two non bid, and and then two other bids. Um, I gave those to Jeff, so one came in, I think, at 49, and then the other two were 55, maybe, and 60-something. I can't remember the numbers right off here. I don't have them in front of me. Um, so two vendors w w would take in some of our stuff as trade, so I had to offset the price by a little bit. Um, so those are the numbers I got. And then there is one one thing in there um, to repair the frame, if that's the way you guys would rather go. Yep. It was like 15 grand, but you still have a 2000 truck. Old truck, yeah. Mm. <clears throat> and, um, okay. I know we generally don't use chapter 90 for purchasing, you know, large equipment like this. Right. Um, so if we could do it another way, hey, I'd be up for that too, but I, I, I don't know. What are your thoughts, Tom, on that? Um, and, and I, I believe that chapter 90, chapter 90 has been, has been used. It's a lot, it's allowable use. Um, we, we have more trouble trying to bring people with this time of COVID. We have trouble, more trouble bringing people in, in together to get a meeting scheduled and in, and in place. Um, I, I, I believe that, you know, the, the truck had a, a unforeseen um, breakage that that's non-repairable. So, so I understand why you may not want to use chapter 90, but at the same time, I, I don't see any other way um than to use chapter 90. now what we can do what we can do in the springtime at the annual town meeting is we can appropriate money to the highway for that we can use so if you feel if, if there's there's a thing that that we need that money back in we can if we have forty nine thousand dollars from available funds we can take the forty nine thousand and and put it into account so the highway department can use it for one of the projects 
Right. And then replenish the, the funds. Right. Yeah. I mean, it is a, an unusual circumstance, you know, uh, in my opinion, that that's, I think that you could do that. Yeah. Yep. Makes sense. Uh -huh. All right. Um, do we have a motion to, for that? Motion. All right. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Any, any other uh, discussion on that, George, at all? Anything you want to talk about? No. I mean, we're, we've got a couple. Our old Amherst project got put aside because of uh, some sewer issues we had. Uh, to hold that road together, I think I'm going to shim some little a few sections of it for the winter. Okay. Because uh, I don't know if we'll even get to it next year. So it might be a good two-year patch. Uh, it's a little over eight grand, I think it is, to, to shim it. I think it makes sense to do it um, yep. just to hold the road together because because we spend we spend a lot of time out there last year patching potholes and and it it's it's pretty bad in a few sections so um, once we get that sewer thing figured out then we can you know mill and and refill it with some new pavement and hopefully it'll be good for a bunch of years All right. <clears throat> Maybe we'll get lucky. We won't have one of those wild winters where the temperature is fluctuating like crazy. Yeah, too, that, you know? that really plays a havoc with potholes, that's for sure. It does. It does. And you get that thawing and freezing and everything. Yep. <clears throat> all right. All right. Thanks, George. Appreciate it. Thank you. So I'll, uh, I'll contact that, that, that guy tomorrow and uh, send okay. in the Chapter 90 paperwork, and we'll get that thing rolling. All right. Great. Thanks. Thank you, guys. George? Yes. All right, David, is there, I just had some public comment, but it was oh, about yeah, go ahead. 90 stuff. And so maybe George could stay for a moment. Sure. Um, and that is that I ride my bike a lot and there's obviously North Main Street at some point in a couple of years is going to be, you know, finished. Um, yeah, so next summer, happens, next summer, that project's supposed to start. Whenever. That's not yeah. what I'm concerned about. <laughs> yep. What I'm concerned about is the next bit of road going north from there, which as far as pavement's in fine shape right now. But I remember when that was either the last time that had new pavement put down or the time before that, I inquired, and I don't remember who I inquired with, as to why they hadn't put a little more of a shoulder on the first part of it up till Falls Road because that gets so much bike traffic. Um, and there's essentially no shoulder at all. Um, and that's also at the point at which the speed limit is, you know, 45, 45. so yeah. trucks are going a lot faster and there's no alternate bike route out of town going north, um, on, you know, on this side of the river. And so there's a huge amount of bike traffic on North Main, right up to Falls Road, and then it almost all goes on Falls Road. And so after that, it's not a big deal, but right now the shoulder there is six inches okay, a foot and then you've got two sections um on the west side of the road where you got guardrail and when they put the guardrail in i think last time they did improvements on the road they put it really tight to the road and so you know that just adds to this to, to the risk and the danger there because they're just you know there's no bailout room there's nothing you just are you're, you're just feeling trapped so i would just you know i i, I want to I just want to put in your long-term thinking, okay, that next time, because I don't think anything, I don't think we got the money to do anything to that before the road gets resurfaced the next time, whenever that is. I wish that was not the case, um, but I'm sort of, you know, I'm realistic. I realize that there are a lot of competing projects for Chapter 90 money, but that next time that gets done, that there be something between what's now, it, it doesn't have to be like what the state requires. You know, I mean, the state requires five feet. I mean, that's absurd. Yep. Um, but, you know. A little bit bigger than six inches, you, maybe. Yeah, I, I mean, it's just, you're out there, you're feeling incredibly exposed. And yet, because it's the only route, you know, serving a wide area, it gets a whole lot of traffic on bikes. And I'm not at all concerned about the car traffic because the car traffic, people are just incredibly... Um, polite okay they give i mean they just you know i'd never have a problem i mean they're always pulling over always slowing down so on but it's the trucks and particularly the dump trucks in the semis and they're either because they got some place to go they don't live in town you know they're not so concerned 
or because if they slow down, then it's more work to get back up to speed, all these things. And so they just keep coming by and, you know, you've got so little room. Um, I gotta keep my fingers crossed, but so I'd like to put it on your radar screen. Uh, uh, that, Peter? Yeah? I like to second everything. I'd like to second everything you said. Yeah. And and in my opinion, the state was crazy when they put the guard. You put the guardrail so close yeah. to the road. Even if you had to get out of the way, you couldn't get your. You couldn't get off. I agree one hundred thousand percent with what you said. And 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 even on this whole thing about the uh, upgrade of of North Main Street, you know that's fine. You're going to do what North Main Street, so you get a mile and a half. But then yeah. you go from you go from um, that word ends up to the rest of the way. You, you have people, cars stopping, cars uh, pulling into the other lane to get out of the way. It's, it's crazy. Right. And you're right. There's and, and, a lot and those of volume. People, and those people are not going slow. Those people are going at a high rate of speed. So, I mean. Bicycles, too. Is, yeah. it, is there any, I mean, I just look at it and say, well, nothing's going to be done for a long time. But I'd like, you know, at least next time around, we, we, we try and do something. But I don't know what the. You know, I have a hard time being optimistic, but I at least want to get you guys. I mean, obviously, Tom, you're aware of it, but get it oh, so that really gets considered. I've said it a million times, Peter. I agree with you, one yeah. million percent. I even see it, you know, going back and forth. And I, I sometimes I ride my bike up like towards the book mill and everything that way. So, yeah. right. And you, yeah. you and run into that same issue. See, it's totally different than 40 either South Main or 47 South of town because yep. number one, you don't have that guardrail issue. Okay. And number two, right. you don't get the truck volume. Yep, that's very true. Uh, it's just it's just a totally different feeling, and um, you know. Anyway, I, I I I think you understand. I just wish there was something we could do about it before too many years pass. Well, maybe the next time we get uh, the state in here to talk about um, the intersection and everything, we can put that bug in the rear then too. You know. All right, and the and the other thing while while I got you that I I just sort of want to mention, and that is that when roads are fixed. Okay, whatever the process is, um, there hopefully is good attention to what's done on the you know foot or two or three on the side of the road, which is where bicycles road, where bicycles go. Because just as an example, if you go up to Montague and you go from Montague Center going north on Turner's Falls Road, mm -hmm. okay, going up towards like uh, where the police fire station is is up there. Okay, and they've repaved that just north of Montague Center for a couple miles. And the problem is that there were there are a number of drains along, yeah. you know, the oh along the shoulder, basically area. the foot and a half to two feet along the shoulder, and yeah. those drains were already down a little bit. Okay, and they came and they just threw a couple more inches of pavement on top, but the drains stayed where they are. They didn't okay. lift the drain. And now you got a bunch of, you know, a bunch of holes that basically would do a number on a bike. Okay. And you say, well, yeah, you can see them coming. You get out of the way to get out of the way. You've got to get out in the traffic a little bit, you know? but bikes are no different. Bikers are no different than people driving cars. I mean, every once in a while you're not paying attention, you know, and it wouldn't have taken much to do that so that you kept the integrity of the biking area as well as of the road area. And so, I don't know if we're going to fix Old Amherst Road or wherever it is to make sure that the outside foot or two is bike friendly, the way they put pavement down, the way they deal with drains, the way they deal with any other sort of obstacles. Uh, you know, one place here in town that's, that seems to be a recurring problem is right at the intersection of 47 and, and uh, 116. If you're coming down North Main Street and you turn, uh, to go over the bridge, there's a pothole there around the grain, around the drain that just keeps coming back. And, you know, it's those little things that can make a big difference when we're doing our road, road work that I, I hope we can pay attention to. Is that pothole there now, right at the it's, moment? It's small Maybe. now. It's small yeah. now. It doesn't need anything okay. now. But, you know, it just keeps coming back. And then I know that, you know, it, it does get taken care of. Okay. But, you know, it's just... Whatever, I think you understand. Yep. Any, okay. can, anything you can do to look at that one, George, maybe? I, and, and right Before now, it's not, it's not a worry. Is it right? It will okay. be, you know, and it's been a couple of times where it got pretty good before, pretty big before it got fixed. And then you're having to swing, again, you're having to swing out into the traffic, you know, or yep. hit something that you will know, do a number on you. So, yep. 
All right. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate Thank it. You. <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> um, do we have any other public comments at all? No. All right. Um, that is actually the last regular item on our agenda. We've got some other important dates to remember. Next, our next meeting will be next Monday, September 28th at 6.30. And I see that the final real estate, water district, and personal property tax bills are due October 1st. So if you send those in manually and do that by yourself, just remember those dates. Um, do you have any other, uh, anything else you want to mention or dates? Yeah, I just wanted to add that um, there is the drop box outside the back of the town office building at 12 School Street that people can drop their taxes off. Um, it, you can also pay online. And then the a treasurer collector's office is going to be open uh, Wednesday the 30th from 8 to 4. Um, and we're going to you know, set up social distancing and, and cordoned yep. off that, that side of the building. But if people do want to come in, um, you know, a reminder not to drop cash off in the box. So yeah. if you're paying with cash for receipt purposes, um, so eight, eight to four on the 30th and then eight to noon uh, on the first. The first. Um, will be open. So. All right, great. Thanks. Yeah. And that's on the website too, right? Just in case. Yep. That, that went okay. up on the website today. All right. Excellent. All right. <clears throat> I think that is all we actually have for this evening. Um, do we have a motion? Thank to you. Thanks, George. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Oh, so soon? I know. Well, we can keep going, I suppose. Motion. <laughs> all right. I'll second. Uh, all those in favor of adjournment at 710? Aye. Aye. All right. Thanks, everybody, and thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week.